Here's, what, here's a little history. This is a little brief history of, of China. This is the 30,000-foot view version. China, as you know, was ruled by dynasties for the longest time. I mean, the, the, the Ming dynasty, the, you would know a lot of these names just off the top of your head if I started going through all these dynasties. There's so much history and actually really cool history in China. Well, eventually those dynasties, for various reasons, broke up, fell off, went away. And China was kind of ruled by, frankly, warlords for a long period of time. This guy who had the most guns and most guys would control this territory, and this guy would control this territory. And eventually, China became a divided nation. This is prior to World War II. They became a divided nation. The communists were fighting against the nationalists. The nationalists would be the ones that you would agree with more. And they were having this huge civil war. And then... Time is funny. Japan decides to invade China. Japan, this is all prior to World War II, basically at the start of World War II, they do this huge military invasion of China. They're in Manchuria. They're in Shanghai. They're dropping planes, bombs, killing Chinese people all over the place. Well, the nationalists and communists were busy fighting each other. The Ch Japanese came in. And then what happened? Well, the nationalists and communists decided to join forces in order to get rid of Japan. Hey, well, we'll take up our fight once we get Japan out of the country. But remember, American communists aren't the only ones who don't feel any sense of loyalty to their country. They frankly want to destroy the country. That's how communists are. Communists don't believe in loyalty to any nation at all. They really don't believe in loyalty to anything. They believe in power. They believe in destruction. So the nationalists and communists, they came together to fight against the Japanese, but Mao, Mao was no dummy. Mao said, oh yeah, yeah, we're definitely on the same team. Uh, won't fight you anymore. Hey, uh, nationalists, there's a big Japanese army over there. You guys should definitely go fight them. Uh, we'll be over here doing some other stuff. Go fight them. And the nationalists had to bear the brunt of the war against Japan within the borders of China. So when the war was finally over, World War II, when the communists and nationalists decided to take up the fight once again, the nationalists found themselves broken, lacking manpower, lacking the weapons needed, and the communists mopped them up. 1949 rolls around and the communists have taken over China. Okay, well that's really bad. It certainly was bad for the 40 to 50 to 60 million Chinese people Mao and the communists murdered in the coming decades. Eventually, China got to the point that the Soviet Union got to when it collapsed. Eventually China got to the point and realized, okay, this, this communist, this pure communism stuff is insane. It simply doesn't work. Everyone's dying here. We have no money. What we need is not to have freedom. We need to basically merge communism with kind of a, a capitalist system, almost a managed capitalism, which I know is the opposite of what capitalism is, but that's what China decided to do, which brings us to the United States of America and where we are today. You see America, in a now horrible, fateful decision, decided that, hey, they want to be a little less commie. We should, we should help them. Let's help, let's help these Chinese communists. Let's help them learn about the greatness of capitalism and get them on their feet. And we began to work hand in hand with China. And we began to build their economy for them. We began to ship all of our manufacturing to China, encouraging others around the world to do the same. Only China never became our friend. China was always our enemy, and China had always intended to take us down. That was their stated goal. And now we get to the place where we are now, where we are in our own fiscal crisis that is about to get a whole lot worse. And China is looking like they just might end up being quite desperate with what's going on over there. They have the lockdown protests and everything else. So what do you need if you're a desperate nation that's maybe hurting financially? You need other nations. You need to do some conquest. And China's looking over at Taiwan, licking their chops, and Joe Biden's busy telling the world that we'll step in and defend them. That we are not going to step back. We are not going to change any of our views. So are you China saying that, that the United States would come to Taiwan's defense if yes, China we, attacked? Yes, we have a commitment to do that. That's not good, is it? So we have a desperate nuclear power 
aimed at conquest right now. We have a president of the United States of America, dementia addled, who says we will put American troops in harm's way to stop that from happening. A bit of a dangerous situation, no? You're starting to understand why the collapse of China is a big, big, big deal. As they break up, they get more dangerous, not less dangerous. 